Okay, so let's uh, play with some macros here. Um, first of all, what you want to do is add macro button to your to your configuration. You can uh, you're already sitting here like this. Record MIDI macro, drag it on there, and you've got a macro button now that you can use to record a new macro. Um, but to save time, I've I've made up a import page, so we'll import this page that has a whole bunch of macro buttons, and then let's uh, import this page, to page one, and boom, we've got a whole bunch of macro pages now. Macro buttons, just as you should say. So, to uh, record a macro, real simple, just uh, click the macro button so the it turns red, shows that it's recording, and then you can, uh, you know, do whatever you want to do. Make some changes, set some things, and uh, there you're done. And just click it again to stop recording. And it uh, records the number. I've already done three Naracos, so it's this is the fourth macro. And uh, and then if you want to see it work, go to work here. You just uh, click it, boom, and all the things I just did come back again, right? Just like that. And uh, so that's fine. I mean, this is something you can do within a scene. That's not such a big deal. Um, but here's some things you probably can't do within scenes. So for example, let's say storing a uh, scene. It's not something you can do. Well, you could do it with a user-defined key, I suppose. But uh, here's something that you can do using the macros. So if I want to, uh, if I want to do a store, um, sorry, I forgot to record. Let's do a record and do a store. So that's storing it. It takes a second because um, it's looking for a console that's not actually connected. So it takes a second for the editor to come back. As soon as it does, it's it's been stored. And so instead of calling macro file, let's call it store scene six. Okay, so then if I make a bunch of changes and do a bunch of things, I could hit store there, but if I happen to be using this um, stream deck, I can just hit store scene six. And now that configuration is stored into scene six. So just to show, come back, all those settings are there. So that's something you can do. Um, but let's do some things that you can't store into a scene. Um, for example, uh, selecting a particular channel. So here I'm selecting channel 5. So, and so that should be select channel 5. See if that works. So if I select a different channel and then hit this one, it goes back and selects channel five again. So that's something you can't store in a scene. Uh, also, queuing. Let's, uh, let's do a let's store some queues. So if I decide I want to queue these first four channels and store that, and then uh, let's call that. You me and then uh, let's unqueue them because that's not stored in the scene. There's no way to really reset that. Um, let's go back and hit uh, queue me, boom, and those four channels are queued. So that's not something you can do within a scene. Um, here's something else we can do. Let's do uh, outport setups. Well, that's some, not something that you can store in a scene, so. Just to prove that, I can change the delay time here, and you can go to the factory initial data. It doesn't change this, but if I wanted to store a delay time, um, I can do that with a with that macro here. So let's uh, change this delay time and this one here, and turn these two on. Okay, 
store that, so let's call that out delay. And uh, those off and reset them back. And let's try it, fire that. And look, they're back on and they're done. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of things like that that you simply can't do within scenes that you can do with the macro recording. So there you go. That's a little demonstration. And uh, um, you can see here that it stores the the um, um, the commands that you've done here. And so you can edit them afterwards if you decide you wanted to. Uh, so macro forest is doing some uh, input ch channel stuff. So if I uh, play back that one, uh, well, it's, uh, it's pushing some channels up. So if I go, well, that's not really what I want. I want to I want to change that value there. Okay, what's happened here? Oh, there we go. So I'm put simple two, but I want to change it to let's say zero dB. So let's change it zero dB on what's that input number two? Yeah. So instead of being minus twenty point nine, it's now it's going to be zero dB. Let's try that. And channel 2 is now at 0 dB, so you can edit them after the fact too, which is kind of cool. And uh, there you go, lots of fun. Enjoy.